deals with, with, with a lot of uh, interesting you know, dilemmas and issues. And um, in the movie, there's two types of music that you, you generally hear. One of the types is a non-secular music, which is really for the Abbey, which is the prep school. Uh, every time that, that we hear music that's within the Abbey, it's music that is very closely related to uh, very old compositional forms. I, I started by doing a lot of research about uh, Gregorian chant. At times it's two-part writing, at times it's three-part writing in layers. And you hear it probably in its most pure form with the choir. There's sometimes just pieces that are just choir only. And that's one type of music. And then the main character, Luther, whenever he's not in the Abbey, he feels really free. And this is one of the big defining characteristics of our main character, is that whenever he leaves the Abbey, that's when he really feels like he's himself, and he feels really restricted every time he's in the school. So the music that you hear whenever he's outside of the school um, is music that's usually at quicker tempos and uh, uh, different orchestrations. Oftentimes it's a lighter feel. There's uh, a more playful element to it. Uh, in the score, actually, I utilized a lot of atmospheres. So, I would, I think there's about five uh, musical elements to the movie, and there's the strings, there's the brass, there are woodwinds, and in the woodwinds are, are various ethnic flutes. And there's a choir, and then there's a lot of atmospheres and textures. And at times, sometimes the score is only atmospheres and textures, and then the orchestra starts to, you know, peek its way out of it and grow from it. But in the scene right after he kills uh, Bennett, it goes to complete atmosphere and textures. And it's, and it's supposed to be, have a sound of something otherworldly, like not something you can kind of hang your hat on, like, oh, that's a string. You know, it's like, it's kind of too familiar in a way. So we utilize a lot of atmospheres that when we, when we mix, will be panned around and surround and, and try to utilize the, the full you know, matrix that you can mix in. And later on in that cue, it eventually, you start hearing strings again and so forth. Throughout the movie, you see Luther's kind of descent into losing it, and <clears throat> there, there's an extremely pivotal moment at the end of the movie. They're just about to turn, you know, arrest uh, Father Kelly, and um, and Robbie speaks up and says, "Hold on, you know, I know who, who you know who did this," and and reveals, you know, who it is. And that's when Luther really snaps and, and shoots him. He runs back into the abbey. And then there's a, there's a scene, it's in the confessional. And Luther is a mess. And he he's, has a gun and he threatens to, it looks like he's gonna kill himself. 
At the moment that it looks like Luther may actually just kill himself in the confessional because he, he doesn't want to go to jail for the rest of his life. Father Kelly actually punches his hand through the confessional and grabs a hold of, of Luther by the neck and forces him to make a choice, a life choice right there. I think like any project, when I'm thinking about a project to choose, it has a great deal to do with the collaborators and certainly what the movie is and, and the role the music can play in it plays a significant role as well, you know, in, in choosing to do a project. But by and large, the, the most important thing to me is always the collaborators that I'm working with. So I would say, more often than not, I choose collaborators versus choosing projects. And when I first met with John and, and Craig, I just got a really great feeling from them that they were very passionate about what they're doing and yet a lot of fun, not the least of which, they really made a tremendous movie. And, and I watched the movie before I met them. They've really done a tremendous job from the story and the conflicts and um, the story turns and the way they've told things and the way they've let the characters speak for themselves sometimes and the performances are, are, are fantastic, you know, between Chris Pine and Cameron Dotto. I mean, it's really inspiring. The cinematography, I think, is fantastic. And all of these elements inspire me and it makes it a lot easier to do my job when I'm inspired by, by all of that. Beautiful. Three and nineteen.